The diversity of Thailand and the cheerful and open nature of the people living here make Thailand the most charming country in southeastern Asia. The view of the green rice paddies that glimmer in the water is a part of the face of Thailand. The 22 million tons of rice produced here every year is grown in large-scale production in many places. But on the paddies of small private farmers, the plow towed by an ox is common even today. The workers still wear the conic raffia hats as their ancestors did. The cultivation of coconuts is also significant because coconuts can be made use of in many ways. The coconut is harvested by trained monkeys in some places, but in the majority of places, people climb up to the dizzy heights of the palm trees to pick the hard and heavy fruit by hand. The milk of the green coconut, especially chilled, provides excellent refreshment and it has an important role in the cuisine of Thailand. The white pulp is used raw or dried and grated all over the world to make confections. Its shell is used to make ornaments such as cups, flower pots, and jugs. The fiber of the coconut is used to make bio mattresses, which are more and more popular. Of course, the people of Thailand carve not only coconut shells, but make beautiful ornaments from tropical wood, which is easy to treat. We can see beautiful examples of the carvings of everyday and religious themes on old buildings all over the country. They still like ornamenting hotels and public buildings with carved pictures. Unfortunately, we can't bring them home, but they can arrange the delivery of furniture we have bought by plane. So it's worth taking into consideration to buy some really beautiful items. Thailand has been the place of breeding silkworms and making silk of excellent quality. The most significant fashion companies of the world like having their goods made here, especially because good quality meets cheap workforce. A good weaver can make about one meter of textile in an hour, and she uses 2,000 twine threads to make it. Textile and clothing industry is one of the main sources of revenues in the country. Shirts, ties, blouses and shawls are especially in demand. Dipped paper, which is used to make albums, exercise, books and wrapping paper, is made by an ancient procedure. They are very much sought after by tourists. Centuries ago, they started to make paper parasols to protect themselves from the tropical sun. Today, we can buy a wide range of parasols from the very small ones, which are used to ornament cocktail glasses, to quite big ones, up to several meters in diameter. There are parasols that can be held in hands, and there are ones that can be put above the table. All of them are made by hand, like the fans, made using a similar technique. Light items of weatherproofed furniture made of bamboo and cane are excellent not only for the garden. Silver and tin mines provide the basic material to make jugs, cups, and trays. The characteristic figures of Thai folk tales are often depicted on the silver objects. It's impossible to enumerate the many objects made of silver by skillful masters and the huge artistic reliefs cost less than you would think. The same beautiful ornaments are made with inlaid enamel technique. 
bamboo objects were covered with enamel gained from enamel insects, but today synthetic material is used for this purpose. Then it's decorated with shell or gold inlay. Eggshell colored mosaic inlay is made of eggshell using genuine gold. Bangkok's true name is the longest in the world. The local people use the short form of its name, Krung Thep, which means the City of Angels. The internationally known name, Bangkok, which means water settlement, expresses the essence more. The boggy, swampy area surrounded by the crooks of the huge river Chao Praya was once the core of the city. It's almost unbelievable that during the last 130 years how the city has changed into a metropolis with 8 million people and skyscrapers. The Baioki Sky Tower, for example, standing over 300 meters high, was built on a 65 meter deep base. The scenery of the city is determined by the buses, taxis, scooters and tuk-tuks which are three-wheeled passenger carriers and were named after the sound of their horns. In the chaos, the groups of monasteries surrounded with walls are islands of peace. These shiny, colorful masterpieces of Buddhist architecture give exoticism to the eclectic cityscape of Bangkok. In the huge group of buildings of the Royal Palace, Grand Palace, the cheerful, tail-like world of the ancient Siam greets the visitor. The main entrance is guarded by six-meter-high demons with human bodies and monster heads. The shiny, colorful statues holding the broadsword can't be missing from any guidebook or brochure about Thailand. They're as typical as Buddhist churches, the shiny wats with individual roofs guarded by them. Believer Buddhists come here again and again. They light a lamp or incense, bring gifts, and pray. The holiest Buddha of Thailand is the 75 centimeter emerald Buddha, which we can admire at Wat Prakeo. It was made in Chiang Rai in the 1400s. It's the holy good luck charm of the Chaks dynasty. The white buildings of the royal palace were designed by a British architect at the end of the 18th century. Wat Po was built in the 16th century. It's the oldest and biggest group of churches in Thailand. We can get to its 18 hectare area through 17 gates. 300 monks live here today. The statues of the garden are Chinese work as well as the romantic rockery. The main site of Wat Po is the 46 meter high gigantic lying Buddha statue. Believers think Buddha arrives in Nirvana by lying in this pose. The huge plaster statue was covered with a fine layer of gold by skillful masters, while visitors place stamp-sized gold sheets on the smaller statues as usual. In the church, we can always hear the tinkling of change thrown into the metal offering boxes. In Thailand, we can find an unbelievable number of churches, over 20,000. In Bangkok alone, there are over 400. The Thai massage center has been set up in Wat Po. The monks, dressed in an orange pall, gladly massage the visitors' back, neck, and shoulders in exchange for a donation. The pictures in the chapel of Wat Po depict those places where Buddha's footprints have been found. Two of them can be found in Thailand, near Saraburi and Chiang Mai. Chao Praya, the mother of the rivers, springs in the northern mountains, and flowing through Bangkok, it joins the Siamese Bay. It's the most important river of Thailand. When Ayutthaya was destroyed, King Rama I appointed the location of the new capital city at the low crook of the river. Two-thirds of the population of Bangkok lived in houses built on pails, rammed into the water or bog. Canals were used as streets, and thousands of smaller and bigger boats ran in them, so the adjective Venice of the East isn't undeserved. 
This changed only in the last century because of the chaotic spread of the city. It's still an exotic experience to sit into a typical longboat in the River Chao Praia, gliding among sluggish barges, arcs carrying rice and aquatic buses. Behind the dignified monasteries and wooden huts, skyscrapers rise towards the sky. Banks and luxurious hotels can be seen on the horizon, but if our boat turns from the river into a klong, that is, an artificial canal, we can get the same view that enamored the travelers of the Victorian age. The most beautiful and characteristic sight of the river in Bangkok is Wat Arun, the Church of Dawn. The 140 meter high prang, built on three terraces, was named after the Indian god of dawn, Aruna. We could find prongs chiefly in Sukhothai and Ayutthaya, which cities were built taking Angkor Wat in Cambodia as a model. In Thailand, salt is made in two ways. On the southern seaside, salt is made by evaporating seawater. On the northeast, off Bangkok, on Highland Korat, they mine salt. Along the salt furnaces, not only salt is sold in sacks and bags, but also several food products preserved by salt. For example, salted fish, octopus, and squid. And the special fish sauce, Nam Pla Prik, which is the most popular seasoning of Thai cuisine, is also for sale. The real floating market is Dam Noan Saduak, which is full of colors, shapes, voices, and scents. The life of the canals is the same as in Bangkok, only the plants are richer. The huge palm trees give not only shade, but also there are some people who harvest coconuts in their garden. There are more and more people who are not driven into the houses by the heat. The atmosphere is unique, and the nomadic way of life also has attraction. At the market, real Southeast Asian bustle dazzles customers. At the same time, scores of boats try to find their way to the customer, who can stand on the shore or sit in a boat. Everything is available here. There are fruits in huge colorful piles, pineapples, mangoes, bananas, durians, pomelos, rambutans, and vegetables such as onions, aubergines, cabbages, courgettes, and tomatoes. Others sell gifts, wood carvings, dipped paper, parasols, dissected butterflies, fans or tin cups, handmade lace, cheap cardboard, handmade batik, cane matting, and of course, such straw hats that the sellers themselves wear. Thailand has always been famous for its arts and crafts. Thai people make more and more beautiful things with incredible patience, sense of beauty, sharp eyes, and safe hands. They practice their art in the streets. At the market and in the villages of craftsmen, we can admire and buy the gifts made of tin, silver, bamboo, enamel, paper, and wood. The center of the market is at the bridge over the Klong. But we can eat and drink not only here, but in the boats as well, where chicken, fish, and crab are roasted on small charcoal cookers and boiled rice is given in bags. We can eat roasted frankfurter, meat malls, chicken breast, or we can choose from the wide range of fresh salads. The dish ordered gets to the customer from boat to boat, from hand to hand. Anyone who likes can enjoy eating fresh tropical fruit and vegetables, but photographers and video makers can also gratify their passion. And those whose hobby is shopping, well, they won't leave with empty hands either. The fair lasts from early morning till late afternoon, and it isn't easy to say goodbye.
Nakhon Patam, the hugest Buddhist monument can be found. Phra Patam Chedi is 127 meters high. Its original fell prey to Burmese conquerors in 1057, when the king of Burma, Anawarata, besieged and burnt down the city. Nakhon Patham is a sanctum of believers and pilgrims because Buddhist precepts were first announced here in Siam. That's why young King Mongkut thought it was important to rebuild the monuments. His ashes, according to his last will, were placed here in the north wing of the building. Chedit, covered with imposing bell-shaped orange tiles, is surrounded by four wiharns. These are usually smaller but more ornate churches. The whole church is bordered by arcade-like corridors, which are broken by the building parts trended towards the four points of the compass. The trees planted around the exterior pavilion were grown from seeds that came from Buddha's birthplace. In November, there's a festival held here where there's also a fruit fair and a flower parade. Pra Patham is a wash with a flood of light. Kanchanabar region is adjacent to Burma, and, as they've always had to be afraid of attacks from Burmese King Rama I, had a strong defensive line built on the Three Pagoda Passes. In World War II, the Japanese wanted to send support supply for their troops in Burma. For this purpose, they built the famous bridge over the River Kwai, which the Death Railway runs through. 300,000 Asians and almost 60,000 English, French, Australian, New Zealand, and Dutch prisoners of war built a railway here through the jungle. As a consequence of the cruelty of the Japanese guards, starvation, and lack of drinking water, 16,000 prisoners of war died here. The museum and cemetery set up at the former prisoner camp are visited not only by the relatives of the victims. It's good for the visitors to know that the right pronunciation of the river is Kve, as Kvai means pig in the Thai language. By train, we can get to the second most visited national park of Thailand, the main attraction of which is Sayok Waterfall and Pau Wadung Cave, with stalagmite and stalactites. Going by boat, it isn't possible not to notice floating houses decorated with flowers. Some of them function as restaurants, others function as hotels. It's an exotic experience to consume the fine dishes of the Thai cuisine at such a floating restaurant. Between the welcome drink and the dessert, the raft, which is towed by a ship with engine in the river upstream, may cover 50 to 60 kilometers. Local families or friends gladly hire such a raft for the weekend or feasts. We may sleep under similar circumstances in comfortable bamboo houses with a bathroom. One of the float hotels can be found only two kilometers from the bridge. 25 rafts, 25 bamboo huts give comfortable accommodation. The reception desk and the swimming pool are on a small island, where the guests can get to by boat. Thanks to Pierre Boulet's novel, which has become classic and partly has an autobiographical inspiration, the story of the Kwai Bridge is known by millions of people all over the world. Towards the end of the World War II, bombers taking off from Ceylon destroyed the wooden bridge. What we can see today was built 300 meters from the original place after the war. At the end of November, during the week of Kwai Bridge, plays of light and auditory drama are organized here.
the materialized bridge over the River Kwai opened suddenly in front of him, when after a little more tiring ascending, he reached the top of the mountain, where he could see the whole valley. Some hundred meters under him, a light ribbon was in the river between the two forests. He could see the geometric railings of the beams forming the bridge, wrote Pierre Boulet. A film, which won an Oscar, has been made based on the novel. Ayutthaya is the ancient capital city, which is a dignified view even in its ruins. In Khmer-style churches and palaces made of burnt clay bricks are surrounded by a green park. The group of monuments, which is a part of the world heritage of UNESCO, is actually a skansen in the middle of the city, living even today. It was built on an island 80 kilometers from Bangkok. Three rivers, the Chao Phaya, Pasak, and Lopuri surround it. From the aspect of architecture, Ayutthaya reminds us of Angkor Wat, which is also a Khmer-style palace and group of churches in the neighboring Cambodia. Among the thick walls of Ayutthaya, three royal palaces and over 100 churches were built. The majority of them can still be seen today, although they are ruinous. Ayutthaya was the capital for 417 years, and at the same time it was the economic, political, cultural and religious center of Id Siam. In 1767, it was destroyed by an attack from Burma, in which the majority of the city burnt down. We go on from Ayutthaya to Saraburi, among the teak tree plantations. A hunter found Buddha's footstep not far from the city in the 17th century. The king had a church built above the footstep. Whether we believe that the footstep is genuine or not, thousands of pilgrims made the small settlement famous. Every spring at the anniversary of the discovery of the footstep, the procession of monks dressed in orange palms give a picturesque sight. The monks' small cells hide on the hillside, but we can often see bikukuks and samaners in the church, which functions as a school, as well as the center of social life. On the terrace of the church, an interesting collection of bells can be found. At the church, we can find a market. We can buy Thai lottery here, the piquancy of which is that it doesn't belong to the state, but to the church, and its revenue goes to charity. The biggest population of the grey stork can be found in North Thailand. Anastomus otitans is the relative of the European white stork and it's native to India. From the lookout tower, we can watch the stork's life thoroughly. Dozens of ornithologists try to find out why this small valley has become the favorite place for these birds.
Anyone who has seen the cartoon Jungle Book won't forget the ancient church where monkeys live. In Lopuri, it's as if we were in the film. An ancient, somewhat Khmer style church has been given to monkeys. The animals don't need to fight for food every day because they're popular sights and thus totally spoiled by tourists. And so that they won't become totally cheeky, an armed guard protects tourists. The soldierly guard, who is a young Thai girl, takes to task about monkeys with a slingshot if necessary. Pattaya is one of the two tourist paradises of Thailand. It's much closer to the capital city than Phuket, where we can get by plane, but it takes only two hours by bus to get to Pattaya. The name of the resort lying in the Siam Bay means southwestern wind. The former fishing village has become a favorite resort due to international tourism in the last 20 years. Aside from the rainy season, the permanently pleasant climate, good public safety, and several entertainment and sports facilities make Pattaya popular. It's cheaper than other popular resorts of the world. We can hire a sunshade and deck chair for a little money and they also mind taking our deck chair further away if it gets out of the shade. The water is lukewarm and shallow, and there are more programs than an average tourist can possibly take part in. There's jet skiing, surfing, water skiing, parachuting, banana tennis, archery, badminton and volleyball, bowling, golf and squash, just to mention the important ones. There's opportunity to dive as well, and those who don't want to bathe in the sea can bathe in the fresh water of the pools of Pattaya Park, where there are also aquatic slides. From the beach cruises also start, for example, to the nearby Summit Island, which is a nature reserve. Along the over four kilometer long front, there are hotels, restaurants, bars and shops competing for guests. Besides Thai restaurants, pubs and nightclubs, we can find Chinese, Indian and European ones too. From the street sellers to the huge shopping centers, we can find everything here. And the active nightlife is another attraction of Pattaya. The beautiful Buddhist church of Pattaya is on the peak of a mountain above the resort. The banisters of the Buddhist churches and monasteries are ornamented by the waving body of a snake called Naga. So is the 50 meter stairs of the church of Pattaya. You shiver at the thought, what if this snake came to life, don't you? Well, in North Thailand, the 50 meter dead snake was caught in the river Mekong, which proved that the sculptors took a real creature as the model. Chiang Mai is the northern capital city, which is called the Rose of the North, because the most talented artists and craftsmen and the most beautiful Thai girls of the country are found here. Miss World Beauty of 1988 was born here. The city is of course abound in Buddhist churches, but due to the activity of Protestant missions here, there are more Christian churches than anywhere in the country. Among Buddhist clerics, we can have a look at the Chedi, where the famous Emerald Buddha was found. The most famous church is Wat Doe Shutep, standing on the peak of the mountain. According to the legend, a white elephant carrying a Buddha relic was wandering in the surroundings of the city, and a church was built where he stopped. It happened in the 1300s. From the terrace of the church, there's a beautiful view onto the city and the mountains around it. In Chiang Mai, even the monarch keeps a summer residence, Bubing Palace. The city is a good base to visit local tribes, but it's worth having a look at the local markets as well, because the center of arts and crafts of Thailand is here. Especially the night market is interesting, where the members of the mountain tribes also often come to get some money, 
by selling things they have made. Over 1,000 kinds of orchids live in the wilds, in the forests of the country in Thailand. Many of them are parasites, and they net the trunk of the trees with their roots and draw water and minerals from them. The orchid bears 4 million seeds. The flower is always covered by six petals, from which the first one, called labellum, gets bigger out of proportion. This gives the strange, asymmetric shape of orchids. The artificial propagation of the plants living in the wild has been solved due to these wonderful flowers, flaunting in diverse colors, are sold in force all over the country. The popular sights of Thailand are the elephant shows, and many people travel here for the sake of a special safari called elephant trekking. The Maesa Elephant Camp is the biggest and most popular site of this kind in the country. The elephants used to be the animals of coats and arms of Siam in that time, when 80% of the country was covered by jungles. The area of the forests has decreased to one quarter. This and illegal hunting caused a dramatic decrease in the number of elephants. In Thailand, only 13,000 elephants live today. Elephants like humid jungles and moorlands. They like bathing and rolling about in the mud. Mud protects their skin from parasites. They spend 16 hours eating, about 41% of which they utilize. The elephants living in people's neighborhood are involved with their tamer. They can remember and execute about 30 commands. These Indian elephants are smaller than the African ones. Only they can be tamed and put to work. Many of them were used instead of motors and tractors at deforestation and carrying. In North Thailand, it isn't rare to see elephants put to work. But many of them found on a job in tourism after the transformation of economy. Oh. 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 
Elephants pair only in good circumstances. The female carries her baby for 24 months, but she bears it in an hour. The baby may weigh 100 kilograms, and its body is covered by dense, wiry hair, which wears down later on. Some elephants have been taught to paint, and they make their unique pictures before the very eyes of the audience. They organize an exhibition of their pictures, and we can bid for the very best ones. The new owner gets the picture with a photo on which the artist can be seen in the process of work. Thailand isn't abound in high mountains, which can only be found on the north at the border of Burma. Mountain tribes, Maos, Karens, Yaos, Lahus, Maribis, live here partly in nomad, primitive circumstances. All tribes have Chinese or Tibetan origin. Here we are in the notorious Golden Triangle, no man's land, bordered by Burma, Laos, and Thailand, and it's the center of opium culture. The mountain tribes living here have grown the stock of drugs for centuries. Some mountain tribes were located here by the Chinese, building villages for them. They're like reservations for American Indians, but they're less civilized. We have to pay an admission fee for the Chinese soldiers who are on watch if we want to look at the reservation villages. The most exotic tribe is Padong, who belong to Karens. There are several kinds of explanations why they put rings around their necks. The most likely is that the male members of the tribe wanted to protect their women from tigers in this way. The rings used to be made of gold. Today, they're made of mainly copper. The girls are given three new rings every year until they're 25 or get married. They can never take off their rings because their neck and backbone couldn't bear the burden. Akas often go to the markets of Chiang Mai and Chiang Rai and sell gimcrack ornaments. They go often on barefoot, wearing folk costume and lots of silver jewels. Their life and customs are the most primitive and the least known at the same time. 
their religion roots in the ancient belief and spirit. Their sexual license is well known. They not only grow, but also consume opium. The only opium museum in the world can be found in the Golden Triangle, and the authentic photo of the 50 meter long snake, Naga, is also displayed here. Going by boat in the huge river Mekong, we can see the shores of Thailand, Myanmar, and Lagos at the same time. All the three countries want to exploit the small border traffic for their own good. Myanmar has built a luxurious hotel on the shore, Thailand a market and restaurants. can cross to the shore of Laos on small ships. The visa isn't bound to formalities. It consists of paying the visa fee like an admission fee. The harbour of Laos has set up services for tourists who come over for a few hours. It's worth buying Mekong whiskey, in the bottle of which there's a surprise. Its everyday version has a curative power due to the ginseng root in it. The more special one offers a cure for mainly rheumatism due to the snake poison dissolved in it. But not only is the poison in the bottle, but also the snake. Local speciality is the beautifully carved opium pipe. An important source of revenue is the stamp of Laos, which, stuck on a postcard and stamped with a special stamp, can be sent not only for our stamp collecting acquaintances. The market offers goods, habitual in Thailand, and coming mainly from Thailand. The island of Phuket, the tourist paradise of South Thailand, can be found only a 70 minute flight from Bangkok. It's worth visiting here mainly between December and February, because during this time it almost never rains. The temperature is about 30 degrees and the sea about 26 to 28 degrees. The shore is flanked by deck chairs and beach umbrellas. The beauty of the beach is increased by some rocks reaching into the sea. Further from the coast there's coral, so the place is suitable for diving as well. Besides swimming, we can jet ski, surf or water ski. The beach, abundant in coconut palm trees giving shade, has several facilities for those who like sports. Such typical services are available here as hair braiding with ornamental beads or Thai massage. The huge rocks protect the peaceful bays. There are a lot of elegant, expensive hotels and restaurants here. Kamala is much quieter than Patong. There aren't so many shops and restaurants. We can find only a few boutiques, snack bars and moving cellars on the beach, but many people prefer it because of this. Because Malaysia is so near, many Malaysian people live in South Thailand and on the island of Phuket. 
They are not Buddhists, but Muslims, and they can be distinguished from Aboriginals in their appearance as well as customs. At the fence of the oratory, a market takes place every day, so that those who are on their way home from school or work can make good cheer and do the shopping. Some of their specialties are cabbage leaf baked in dough and seasoned with crabs, boiled rice served with sauce, which are sold in packets so as to be easily carried, and roti, which is a pancake-like dish with several fillings. The syrup squeezed from sugar cane, which is consumed fresh, is especially popular with children. Let's not forget that we're close to the equator, and the sunshine can be really dangerous, especially at noon, and for white tourists escaping from the winter. Thailand can be proud of the most developed institution of healthcare in the region of South Asia, but we had better not try it. Those who have more courage can view the bathers, oarsmen, and jet skiers from high above. As one of the most popular entertainments is traveling by parachute, towed by a motorboat. Those who would rather stand the ground can choose volleyball. The city of Phuket was founded by Chinese merchantmen over 100 years ago. Here we can find offices of law and government, the tourist office, the main post office, and the offices of the Thai airline. Phuket used to have a community consisting of Portuguese merchantmen, who brought with themselves not only chili but also their architecture. So the buildings of the city, with a population of 70,000, still have Chinese and Portuguese style. The monk pupils, wearing their orange vestments, give a picturesque view as well as the Buddhist temples, which are exceedingly typical and beautiful buildings. The glazed roof tiles and statues lend fantastic color and shine to the panorama. The inner room of the temples is usually proportioned by not walls, but columns, and they always have an odd number of windows. Pagnaga has more than 160 islands of varying sizes, mainly uninhabited. The region used to be the favorite place of pirates and smugglers, whose slim, old junks attract tourists to this incredible world. We can reach the large bay full of limestone monoliths in an hour. The monoliths protrude out of the Andaman Sea like towers. The rocks have various forms, and most of them are grown with plants and trees. The salty water of the sea and the waves wear and dissolve the underwater part of the limestone. Many limestone mountains are interspersed with caves, which lead to open lagoons. The shore of the bay 
bordered by the sandy beaches and a few mangrove bogs, is 220 kilometers long. The inner part of the island is covered by jungle, but there are a lot of caves and waterfalls too. On the coast, palm trees grow. The mainly unspoilt flora and fauna are really special. One of the most common flowers is the parasite orchid. The unique peculiarity of the Andaman Sea is the mudskipper, a kind of walking fish which has a lung as well as a gill and is able to walk on the surface of calm water and in the bogs. The monoliths and stalactites fascinate not only geologists. The sun shining through the rocks is reflected from the snow-white quartz sand bottom of the sea, giving emerald color in the shallow water and aquamarine blue color in deeper water. One of the most special islands of the nature reserve, Kao Pingang, has also been called James Bond Island, since the film titled The Man with the Golden Gun, starring Roger Moore, was shot here. Since then, many tourists have flocked to the island. Koh Pani Island gives an exotic view, even from far away. It's a pale village inhabited by Mohammedan Malay fishermen. Everything here, the school, the market, the church, even the football pitch, were built on pales. In the harbour, there are shady restaurants with a terrace. Behind them, we can see the fishermen's houses. In front of them, there are gangplanks where their nets are dried. The houses are built here like swallows' nests, snuggled up to each other. The inhabitants of the village live their everyday lives almost in public. Their kitchen and living room are open to the street, which is a narrow plank here. The participants of cruises are given lunch here, which consists of fish, crab, rice, and fruit. By the time the muezzin song intones in the tower of the oratory, we say goodbye to Kopani and coast on among the grand rocks we shoot a last glance at this paradise of unspoilt nature. Pai Pai Islands belong to the most popular tourist sites in Thailand. We can see the shores of the Dream Island flanked with palm trees and the busy harbour from far away. On the island, evocative and stylish accommodation is offered, mainly in small bungalows. The fans of diving come to Pai Pai from all over the world. Pai Pai Don emerged from two rocky islands, which are connected by a sandy spit. This makes the bays back to back, one of which is the beach and the other one is the harbour. We can hire typical long motorboats with Malay boatmen who take us to Pai Pai Lei or Maya Bay. This paradise for divers is famous for the film titled Beach, which was shot here. In Ko Samui, Ko means island in Thai, we can see two beautiful waterfalls, huge Buddha statues and some churches. But it isn't sure that it's worth traveling so far for them. 
The peace of the island is what attracts tourists. We can find here only some peaceful settlements inside the island and fishing harbors on the shore, coconut plantations, snow white candy beach, turquoise sea, blue sky, and sunshine. It's worth looking at this really idyllic island until civilization reaches it. Let's put our hands together in front of our faces in the Thai fashion, and so bid farewell to this pearl of Southeast Asia in this way, hoping to come back sometime. time.